Hi, grade five. I hope you're well. Welcome to, oh, sorry, I'm dropping my book there. Welcome to Thursday and welcome to your natural science lesson. Um, did you miss me? It was strange, hey, not having science every day, uh, but it is better. You need some time to get yourselves up to date with your maths and English, and I hope you're still attending those lessons. Um, so where did we leave off on Tuesday? Well, on Tuesday, we did a lesson about energy. We started a new topic, energy and changed, and we look through the different forms of energy that exist in our world. And today we are going to extend that one step further. So I hope you're ready. So as always, let's just take a couple of seconds to remind ourselves of the email address for your grade five teachers at Worksheet Cloud, which is grade five at Worksheet Cloud. Dot com and we love hearing from you at worksheet cloud so please do send in any questions any interesting facts or anything you would like us to know we love hearing from you so what are we going to be doing in today's lesson well today as i said we learned last lesson about the nine different forms of energy and today we are going to look at how that energy is changed and transformed from one form of energy into another. So I've written here for you, we're going to learn about the different types of energy transfers there are and understand that different objects emit more than one type of energy. Now that word emit means give off or have, okay? so. You don't, a light bulb doesn't just give off light energy, it also gives off heat energy. And there, that's a good example, but we'll go over some more during the course of the lesson. Vocabulary. I've written you need to know all the different nine forms of energy that we learned in last week, um, not last week, sorry, on Tuesday's lesson. And these two new concepts we're going to cover. The first one is conservation of energy, so we're going to learn what that means, and we're going to learn about energy transfers. So get that dictionary out and make sure that you are keeping it up to date. Now, in case you weren't able to attend last lesson or you have forgotten, because it often happens, um, let's remind ourselves of the different forms of energy and what each of them mean. Now you will remember I put this up um, on the screen for you last time. So, um, and you actually had a homework activity after uh, Tuesday's lesson where you had to complete this table yourself. So let's recap. We have the nine forms, heat energy. And remember that is anything where heat is um, given off. So I've got here a radiator. In South Africa, I think you call them a, a wall heater. Um, uh, but there's also other types of heaters, those gas fires and things like that, or a braai even. Yeah, I hope you have, maybe you've had a nice braai during lockdown. Kinetic. Now, again, the English person in me says kinetic, but I do know that most of you will pronounce it kinetic. Totally fine, totally acceptable. P potatoes, potatoes. Um, anything that moves has kinetic energy. Nuclear. Remember I said that this one um, is rather abstract because it's hard for me to show you. It's easy for me to show you heat energy or to show you kinetic energy, but nuclear is a little bit more abstract. It's released from nuclear reactions, so a great example of that would be the sun and any star. Sound. Anything that gives off noise is uh, has sound energy. My four-year-old, amazing amounts of sound energy. <laughs> Light. Anything luminous, okay, so anything that glows, um, and we said things like in our last lesson, the sun, light bulbs, candles, glow worms, anything that gives off light has light energy. Chemical energy. Now, remember, this was the tricky one because although we say the word chemical, we actually mean anything that stores energy. So energy that can be released through a chemical reaction. And I asked you to remember the work we have done on reversible and irreversible changes to remind yourself what a chemical reaction is. So that could be examples of those could be uh, food that you eat or batteries or anything like that, anything that stores energy, petrol, coal, mm. um, electrical. So electrical energy is something that is incredibly useful for us because it can be converted into so many forms of other forms of energy. 
Um, and basically we say where there is an electrical current, there is electrical energy. Gravitational potential energy. The idea that what is up must come down. So anything that is above the ground that has the potential for gravity to act on it, we say has gravital, gravitational potential energy, GPE. So again, I think I used the example of, um, what was it? Yes, what was it? I said uh, a book on a high shelf or um, uh, someone doing a skydive. They all have gravitational potential energy. And then the last one was elastic energy. And that is that anything that has been stretched has elastic energy, such as an elastic band or springs in your bed, anything like that. So that gives you a good recap of those nine. So let's see if you can match the word or the energy type, I should say, to an image. So here I have different pictures. I have a candle, a light. I have a nice plate of burger and chips. I'm quite hungry, actually. It's lunch lunchtime here. Um, I have a very fast running cheetah. I have someone doing a skydive and I've got a big ball of elastic bands. So what I want you to do is pause your video and see if you can match the correct um, energy type, the words are there, to the correct photo. Okay, let's see if you got them right. So chemical energy is the burger. Remember, it is a stored of energy that is released through the chemical reactions that occur when I eat it. Right, what about the kinetic? Yes, of course, it's the cheetah. Oh, and, and as I said earlier, more than some objects do more than one form of energy. So here, the, the skydivers are also showing kinetic energy because they are moving they're falling um but this one is the best picture to show kinetic gravitational potential is of course the parachuters the skydivers jumping out they're coming from a very high place and the gravity is acting upon them thermal energy yes heat now i threw that in there because i wanted to see if you remembered the word the scientific word we use to say heat which is thermal um, so where you hear the word thermal, thermal underwear, for example, you wear those if you're going skiing or to very cold places to keep the heat in your body. OK, and lastly, elastic. Yes, of course, it's my rubber bands. Right. Well done. Good. So now we've done that. Let's move on and look at how energy is transferred. And in order to do that, we need to understand the law of conservation of energy. And it sounds more complicated than it is. It's got a big scientific title, but it's not very um, hard to understand. What it is, is the idea that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but is transferred from one store to another. OK, so energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just is changing from one form of energy into another. All right. That is basically what the law of conservation of energy says. And it's true if you think about it, we often say, oh, you know, you might have one of those days where you say, I have, look, I've got no energy. Of course, you've got energy. Everything has energy. It's just changing from one form to another. And the best example of this um, would be, for example, yourselves eating. So when you eat food, that food, as we've said before, is chemical energy. It's stored energy. And you transform that into different things because of the chemical reaction when you eat it. So the chemical energy that you've eaten then can be used or transferred into kinetic energy when you move or thermal energy to keep your body warm, your body temperature correct, and also back into a different form of chemical energy because it then goes into different compounds in your body. Like, for example, your own body might store it as fat or change it into glucose. It's new chemical energy. So here's a little task that you can do. You can pause again your video um, and do this. I'd like you to draw an energy transfer. And, use yourself as an example. I've chosen Homer Simpson. So here's Homer Simpson eating his donut. Mm, donuts. And what is happening here? Well, there is chemical energy going in with the donut. 
and coming out there would be the sound energy because he often goes mm, donuts as he's eating heat energy is coming off of his body and there will be some form of movement kinetic energy so those show how one form of energy is then transferred into other forms it is not created nor destroyed it is just changing into a new form so why don't you give it a go draw a picture of yourself or it doesn't need to be you eating it could be you kicking a football for example if you're kicking a football that kinetic energy of the ball flying through the air is then changed to gravitational potential energy when it is up and comes back down in more kinetic energy but there's also sound energy that when your foot hits the ball it goes a thud yeah and so on and so forth now it doesn't need to be humans that uh, that we think of when we do transfer uh, transfers of energy um here if i click it should come up i have a battery operated fan many of you might actually have one of these in your homes um so here's the battery operated fan what is the transfer of energy that occurs well there is chemical energy inside the batteries that becomes electrical energy when i flip the switch and then obviously that then becomes kinetic energy as the propellers move and produce the cool air to cool me down. So there's an energy change, um, chain, sorry, as the energy changes. Lots of chs, sorry. There we go. So here is a challenge for yourselves. I have got a list on the screen for you of, what is it, six, seven, eight, eight different um, everyday items or everything they things you'll see and i want you to think about the energy transfers that happen so the first one is burning a match um, a portable torch a microphone a radio television a catapult a mobile phone or a car no sorry again english in me i say mobile phone i know you know that that is a cell phone but you get the idea so let's do the first one together burning a match so what happens when I burn a match? Well, first of all, there's the kinetic energy of me striking the match, the movement of the match hitting the match paper. Then there's chemical energy because in the tip of that head of that match, energy is stored. That then is transferred into thermal and light energy, heat and light energy when the match is struck. Now, also, of course, I haven't put it up there, but if I'm holding the match in the air, it's then also got gravitational potential energy, doesn't it? Because I am holding it up above the ground. So your job now is to pause the video and write these down in your book and write down the chain of the transfer of energy for each of those. And remember, just as with the match, there might be more than one energy type at the end emitted. So I'm going to give you a second now to do that. So pause your video, as I said, and see if you can give it a go. Right, let's give them a um, go over ourselves and see how you did. Portable torch. Well, if it's portable, the reason I put portable is because then it, you know it's got batteries in it. So a portable torch. Kinetic. Now, I started with kinetic. You may not have even included the kinetic, which is fine, but I'm talking about you hitting the button to turn it on. That's kinetic, isn't it? And there might even be a bit of sound energy. When you click the button down, my torch goes ka -ching. There's sound energy. It's emitting a sound. But the kinetic of turning the torch on turns the chemical energy, which is stored in the batteries, into thermal and light energy. But it also, obviously, there might be elect you might have included in there electrical energy as that chemical reaction occurs electricity a current goes through the batteries to turn the thermal and light and you might have even included gravitational potential because you're not usually turning a torch on unless you're holding it up to shine it somewhere microphone okay again a microphone kinetic to turn it on electrical this time i i assumed it was plugged in um, maybe you've done a battery one, so it'd be chemical to electrical. And then obviously it's going to be emitting sound and a certain amount of thermal, a certain amount of heat. I don't know if you've ever used a microphone, but they do get quite hot because anything that's really using electricity makes heat. Radios. Oh, again, sorry, I forgot to say microphone. Again, you're holding it up, aren't you? There'll be gravitational potential energy there. 
radio kinetic to turn it on, which makes electrical energy flow, which turns to sound and again thermal because where there's electricity, there's usually some form of heat. Television, electrical. I've missed out the kinetic here, but again, you might want to have said that you've turned it on. Electrical that can be converted and transferred into sound, light and thermal. I don't know if you've ever done this, and please don't do it if you've got mum and dad have got one of those really fancy TVs, but if you've ever touched a TV, the back of it, after it's been on, it's very, very hot. A catapult. Right, well, I've got the kinetic of pulling back the catapult. Now I've got elastic energy, haven't I, because I've stretched it, and it's got gravitational potential because I'm holding it up. When I let it go, there will be kinetic as the projectile moves through the air. A mobile phone. So a mobile phone, here's mine, it's chemical energy because it's a battery um, that is then obviously transferred to electrical energy and then goes into sound, light and thermal. Again, if you've ever been on the phone for a long time, which I have a lot recently, it does get quite warm um, after it's been on for a while. And then I've got a car. So the car, I said chemical because it is using fuel, petrol that is being burned, a chemical reaction to release it. Then it goes to kinetic as the car moves. And of course, there's sound, there's light. Maybe you turn the lights on in your car. There's thermal. You get the idea. All of these energy transfers show you, hopefully, that no energy is lost. Energy is conserved. Remember, that's what we're learning today, the law of conservation of energy. Energy is conserved. It is not created or destroyed. It is just constantly changing as it works its way down a chain. So coming back to my Homer Simpson here, uh, this is a picture of Springfield where Homer lives. Maybe you can pause your video, have a little look at some of the things that are occurring. Maybe you want to look at this train moving or this car on fire down here, or the aliens beaming someone up, and go through the picture and write down different energy chains you can see. Um, you don't need to use my picture. Maybe you've got a copy of Where's Wally or any storybook. Open it up and see if you can find a, a good picture to look for and look through different forms of energy chains. So lastly, so I have put an activity for you on uh, the website on worksheetcloud.com. The activity is a worksheet that's from Worksheet Cloud and it's got lots of different questions on the forms of energy that we covered in Tuesday's lesson and energy uh, cha uh, changes and transfers that we've done today. Um, but there's also some other things mixed in there and I thought to myself that something you could do is to go around your house and choose five different devices. It doesn't need to be an electrical device. For each one, state what the energy is stored as and what the energy is being transferred and changed to. And if you really want to challenge yourself, you can, can you find examples that include all the different types of energy stores and energy transfers? Okay, you're not probably gonna find the nuclear one, but you could see if you can find elastic, gravitational potential, heat, thermal, remember, sound, light, or oh, I'm, I'm now testing myself if I can remember all nine, uh, electrical, chemical, what was the last one? What is the last one? Oh, I can't, I don't think I can remember. Was it, what was it, was it? Movement, remember, kinetic. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. Best of luck with those activities for you to do after um, you've finished with uh, watching this. And then I will see you again tomorrow, Friday, for our last lesson of the week. And just before you have a lovely, well-deserved weekend. Okay, grade fives, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.